This is a story not only of this area, it's an American story. African American history here and throughout the country is American history. These are the same stories that you hear from all over the United States. There's an article by a New York Times reporter dating back to the 1880s where the reporter happened to be traveling through the region and noticed that this was a community where white people and black people lived together and married and had children. And he referred to them as barbarians. This Mount Zion AME Church uh, started years ago uh, down the road a piece about 1850s, 1860s. The story is that this building was moved from Long Hill Road, which is about two miles up the road. It originally started in the homes of some of the original black families that lived in the Sourland Mountains. Corinda and Spencer True, uh, they donated the land in 1899. Some people think that it's part of the True family, part of the Hughes family, but these names are all founding um, African American families that have always lived in this region. And they built this church originally because the African Americans didn't have their own place to worship. They were either relegated to the balconies or the back of the church, or they weren't allowed to come down to the altar to pray. So they needed a place where they could come and worship. So this building here suited that purpose. We have a rich history here of this church. The church kept going by donations from uh, the old uh, camp meetings, which were held right on the corner of Camp Mead Avenue and Hollow Road. The original camp meetings that were held maybe just a mile up the road here were diverse events that people who were congregants of this church attended, but um, white folks who lived in the area also attended. The land was donated by a white farmer, uh, Mr. Brophy, and they'd raise funds to keep this church going and the camp meeting was a way to do it. They, I mean, it was a big, big thing at the time. Oh, they would come to the camp meetings and it would be singing and preaching. People would dress up in all their fineries. And there was preaching and music and great food and everyone got dressed up. It wasn't just the black community, it was the black and the white community coming from all over, from Allentown and from Princeton. It was uh, a place where white people and black people could get together to celebrate life. They really left us a rich legacy of getting together and working together, not dividing ourselves. I met Beverly Mills and Elaine Buck, the two founders of the museum and authors of If These Stones Could Talk, at a Sourland Conservancy holiday party. I was the organization's executive director at that time. We uh, had a great conversation about research that they had been doing for several years at that point for their book. And this was research into the history of their ancestors and the history of the early congregants of the Mount Zion AME Church and African-American history in general in this region. So these stories that we are uh, gathering uh, and sharing are um, research about the African Americans from the region. And a lot of the information that we're finding is uh, just an eye opener for everyone. We really realize that we're talking about the history of the Sourland Mountains. So I invited Bev and Elaine and Elaine's husband, John Buck, to give a presentation at our new educational series, which was called the Sourland Mountain Train Station Series. And I was just so impressed by their research and so floored that there were so many things they were telling me about the history of this area that I didn't know. And, you know, because the Conservancy is focused on conserving the ecology and the history of the region, I felt it was important for the Sourland Conservancy to get involved with sharing that information. 
maybe 20 minutes into the presentation, people were literally hanging through the open windows and the open doors to see and hear this wonderful presentation on African-American history in the Sauerlands. It was a great realization to, to see how people were really hungry for the true history of this region and for the um, African-American story. So that's how the two organizations started to partner on this fantastic mission of telling you know, the, uh, the unique story of the culture, experiences, and contributions of the African-American community in the Sauerland Mountain region. This is what really started the SAM Museum, the Stoutsburg Sauerland African-American Museum and the union with the Sourland Conservancy. We're very diverse. Yes, we have a white executive director for an African-American museum, and we are proud. The whole community has really been very supportive of the idea. And we all work together, and that's the point that I really uh, like to enforce. It's a community, and this organization, this SAM Museum, is a community effort. Our roots run real deep and we're very serious about we, what we do and why we do it. So the Stoutsburg Sauerland African American Museum project and mission are, in my opinion, extremely important, even more so today in this country. So this museum is very timely. We are looking forward to sharing more and more information as we find it. It will help to address the systemic racism that exists in our country by educating people about the history and also providing opportunities for people to come together and have those conversations. This is what we're doing here by just telling the story as it is, as it happened. We provide a space for the conversations to occur and for people to um, come together and, and listen to each other and be together. People don't realize just how uh, systemic racism is here in America. African American history here and throughout the country is American history. This is a story not only of this area, it's an American story. There's a lot that has to be done yet, but we're now headed in the right direction.